I want you to imagine, if you will, chat, that your country has an e-safety commissioner. If you're in Australia, you don't have to imagine. But imagine your country did. And this e-safety commissioner comes across an account on the internet that promotes trans orgies and bestiality. Now imagine that the person who operates this account gets misgendered by a guy over the other side of the world. Now, as a representative of the e-safety commissioner, would you A, go after the guy who's peddling bestiality, or B, use taxpayer funds and resources to go after the guy over the other side of the world for misgendering. That shouldn't be a hard one. Well, guess what's happening in Australia? We're getting sued by X. Let's have a closer look. So Australia's e-safety commissioner, yes, that's a thing, we have an e-safety commissioner, has forced X to take down a transphobic tweet posted by Canadian user Billboard Chris. And X are not happy about it. The Daily Mail says Elon Musk's X sues the Australian government in free speech battle after its world first e-safety commissioner ordered an offensive post to be taken down. Daily Mail Australia last week revealed that X faced an $800,000 fine if it didn't remove a post written by Canadian man Chris Elston in which he misgendered and made disparaging remarks about an Australian citizen, Teddy Cook. Cook, 45, a female to male trans man who has advocated for taxpayer-funded surgeries for all transgender Australians, was controversially appointed to a World Health Organisation expert panel. X, formerly Twitter, complied with the request of the government-run e-safety commissioner and geo-blocked the post in Australia, but the demand backfired spectacularly when it led to the offending post being reshared in a different format and viewed hundreds of thousands of times. Now, now, X has revealed it will mount a legal challenge against the commissioner to protect its users right to free speech. Fucking A, go get him Elon. So this Chris Elston, better known as Billboard Chris, has posted something to X, pointing out that this weird fucked up trans person, and by the way they're not weird and fucked up because they're a trans person, they're weird and fucked up because they're weird and fucked up, we'll get into that later, has been appointed to a World Health Organization expert panel. The E-Safety Commissioner says, whoa, 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 that's hate speech. You can't be posting that, we're gonna find X if they don't take it down. And then what happens? Ba the Streisand effect. You gotta love it. This thing got so much more exposure than it would have because of the actions of this e-safety commissioner. I mean, here's Billboard Chris on inexplicably popular Australian TV show The Project. We know Elon Musk doesn't shy away from a lawsuit. For this time, it's the Aussie e-safety commissioner in his line of fire in a censorship versus free speech smackdown. I'm Billboard Chris and I'm on a mission to end what I consider to be child abuse all across the world, the business of trying to change the sex of children. I don't think any unelected bureaucrat or any elected bureaucrat for that matter should be determining what we're allowed to say online. There was no incitement to violence or anything like that. This is just my opinion and I'm entitled to it. While I, I believe that everyone is entitled to an, an opinion, I believe that everyone is also entitled to live with dignity. I am transgender. I have feelings. I'm a human being. This behaviour and this sort of discrimination, because it is discrimination, needs to stop. Gee, thanks, random trans woman. How about a bit of nuance on the subject? How about your thoughts on government censorship? On freedom of speech? Geez, what about a simple condemnation of fucking dogs? No. I'm a trans woman. Someone got misgendered. And that makes me sad because I'm a trans woman. Fucking hell. At least a couple of the presenters seem to get it, kind of. Do we want the government scanning X? <laughs> and picking out individual tweets that it doesn't like? Because for one person, what's seen as harassment or abuse is another person's free speech or another person's political or personal opinion. And, right. and that line, I don't think anyone's been able to... No, there are, so there are clear lines around incitement of violence and things yeah. like that. And that would be... But there would be other legislation to deal with that anyway, yeah. I think. Now, of course, they showed a massively chopped down version of his interview. The original, which he has posted on X, seems a lot more interesting. I'll leave a link to the full version in the description. Let's start off with um, the post about Teddy Cook. So what prompted you to make that post and um, what inspired you to post that statement? Well, I read the Daily Mail article and at the time on the cover of that Daily Mail article, they actually had a picture that Teddy Cook had posted to social media of a dog having sex with a man. And look, I want nothing but the best for everybody, but Teddy Cook is an individual who has been promoting bondage and bestiality advised that trans-identified people have better sex when they're high on illicit drugs. And I don't think that this is the type of person who should be appointed 
to a panel of health experts at the World Health Organization. Mr Elston's billboard Chris alleged offence came when he shared a Daily Mail story in late February about Mr Cook. Cook's now private social media posts are awash with X-rated material, including public nudity, bondage parties, trans orgies, and even a photo of a man apparently having sex with a dog. While the Daily Mail Australia does not suggest that those revelations should exclude Cook from advising the WHO on trans health care, some have questioned his appropriateness for the role. Well, I tell you what, Daily Mail Australia, I suggest they should exclude Cook from advising the WHO on trans health care. In his post, Mr Elston misgendered Cook and made other disparaging remarks. On March 22, Mr Elston received a letter from the Australian government-run eSafety Commissioner demanding that he remove the deliberately degrading post. An ordinary reasonable person in the position of the complainant would regard the material as being offensive. An unnamed delegate of the eSafety Commissioner wrote to Mr Elston. This is because the material singles out the complainant to personify the poster's contempt for trans transgender identity, as well as equating transgender identity with a psychiatric condition. It's understood Cook lodged the complaint with the eSafety Commissioner himself. So what did Billboard Chris write? What was so offensive and so degrading that our government had to step in and order X to remove it from public view? What did he say that was so shocking that our government's now going to have to go to court and defend themselves from X with our tax dollars? Well, I'm not allowed to see it. I'm in Australia. I mean, I could use a VPN and show it to you, but then I'd probably probably get in trouble with the e-safety commissioner. So let's do one better. Billboard Chris actually posted the letter that X received demanding that they take down his post. To X Corp, I'm a delegate of the e-safety commissioner for the purposes of section 88 of the online safety act blah 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 blah. Please see enclosed a removal notice given to you under section 88 of the act. The notice requires you to take all reasonable steps to ensure the removal of the material from your service within 24 hours of being given the notice. Background. On 29 February, the e Safety Commissioner received a complaint under Section 36 of the Act about cyber abuse material targeted at an Australian adult that is available on your service. Taking into account all of the circumstances, I have reached the view that an ordinary reasonable person would conclude that it is likely that the material is intended to cause serious harm to the complainant. This is because the material misgenders the complainant and reiterates that this point is deliberate, which is likely intended to invalidate and mock the complainant's gender identity. The material also contains a statement that implicitly equates transgender identity with a psychiatric condition. The statement is deliberately degrading and suggests that all transgender people, and in this case the complainant in particular, have something that is wrong about their psychology owing to their gender identity. An ordinary reasonable person in the position of the complainant would regard the material as being offensive. This is because the material singles out the complainant to personify the poster's contempt for transgender identity as well as equating transgender identity with a psychiatric condition. I am satisfied that the material is provided on a social media service. The material was the subject of a complaint that was made to the provider of the service. The material was not removed from the service within 48 hours after the complaint was made or within a longer period that was allowed by the eSafety Commissioner. The complaint has been made to the eSafety Commissioner under Section 36 of the Act. The material is cyber abuse material targeted at an Australian adult. On this basis, I have decided to give you the notice. Under Section 91 of the Act, you must comply with a requirement under a removal notice given under Section 88 of the Act to the extent that you are capable of doing so. Failure to comply with this notice may result in enforcement action, including the commencement of civil penalty proceedings for a civil penalty order up to a maximum penalty of $782,500. Wow. I mean, there's so much to unpack there. But instead, why don't we just have a quick look at the original article that Billboard Chris posted? I mean, he included some comments about said article that I probably can't repeat without being targeted by the e-safety commissioner. But it's the next best thing. Okay, so this is what our tax money is being spent on. Defending this guy for being misgendered. Kinky secrets of UN trans expert revealed. Australian activist plugs bondage, bestiality, nudism, drugs and tax funded sex change ops. So why is he writing health advice for the world body? Yeah, good question. Now to clarify, this person is a biological female. They are a biological female who is now a man. They took the hormones, they've got a beard, they call themselves a man. And Billboard Chris pointed this out. And he 
his position was basically, I'm not going to play into your delusion. Why is this weird freak advising the World Health Organization? A transgender member of a UN panel, I think they mean World Health Organization, that's drafting global health rules, has a kinky track record in everything from bestiality to bondage, drugs and nudism, Daily Mail can reveal. Teddy Cook, a female to male trans Australian activist, started work this month on the WHO's 20 expert body, drafting care guidelines for trans and non-binary people. Cook, 45, who describes himself as a professional queer man of trans experience, has a controversial backstory. He's advocated for taxpayer-funded surgeries for all trans Australians and worked on a study about trans people having better sex when they're high on drugs. Cook's social media posts are even more revealing. He's posted about everything from public nudity to bondage parties, trans orgies and even a photo of a man apparently having sex with a dog. He regularly posts material on social media that is, for some, crude and inappropriate. That includes photos of himself naked on beaches, with his hands covering his privates. Others show him in bondage gear in nightclub settings, or wearing t-shirts with explicit text, such as, come in me bro. Another post appears to show a large black dog penetrating a man from behind. Cook also co-founded a safe sex campaign group called Grunt, which promotes hot, informed sex between trans guys and cis guys. The group published a booklet of photos of trans people wearing bondage gear in graphic sex scenes with multiple partners. Well, this person sounds lovely, and I'm not really someone who thinks we should have an e-safety commissioner, but we do, and if they were going to go after anyone, surely it's Teddy Cook and not Billboard Chris. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, but it's pretty funny how this e-safety commissioner have done pretty much the opposite of their job. I mean, they're meant to be an apparatus to discreetly take down hateful posts, but all they've done is amplify it. It's like international news now. Can't wait to see what happens. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ta. Bye-bye. Recession!